Welcome back to Psychology of the Unknown, where we talk about true crime, serial killers, the paranormal, and psychology. If that's the kind of stuff you're into, then make sure you stab the subscribe button and rub its blood all over the notification bell to implicate it in the murder. Also, make sure you send it anonymously to everyone you know. Set it on fire by burning up the like button and leave your manifesto in the comments below. Today I'm going to tell you a story about a Ouija board. This is a true story as far as I know, and it involves my dad's own experience. So let's begin. Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. One day the town my dad lived in was holding a community sale. And so my dad and his wife at the time decided to go check it out. They lived in a rather small town. Everything was within walking distance of everything else. The sale was just a couple blocks away and so they walked down the road and took a look. There were tables set up with all kinds of stuff placed atop them, with price tags on top. This was the late 80s, so everything was still pretty cheap, even for a rummage sale. As the two were browsing, they stumbled upon an old Ouija board at the end of one of the tables. They looked at it, but there wasn't a price listed. It wasn't in a box, it was just a board with the lens attached to it. My dad flipped it over and tried to find anywhere there might be a price for it, but to no avail. When he asked the person running the table, they told him it was free. They just wanted to get rid of it. After some thought and some looks back and forth, the two decided to go ahead and get it. Neither had ever used a spirit board before, and they decided to give it a try, thinking it might be fun. When they got home, they wrote their initials into the back of the board and sat it on the counter and started going about their daily routine, fixing dinner, watching TV, getting cleaned up, the types of stuff most married couples do at the end of the day. While they were in the kitchen sitting at the counter having a cup of coffee, which my dad likes to drink all day long, he took a look at the board and said to his wife, you want to try it? To which she agreed and so they turned down the lights and lit some candles, then placed their fingertips on the lens used to spell out words. They spent some time playing with the board and asking the spirits some questions. After a few minutes of getting nowhere, they decided to give up and go to bed. That night, while they were asleep in bed, the house began to shake. The doors tapped against the frames. The shaking wasn't violent, but it was very noticeable. Think of a strong wind banging against your house. This was just a little bit harder than that, as all the walls shook along with the floor and ceiling. It only lasted a few minutes, and then everything went calm again. The two had been startled awake by the shaking. But as soon as it was over, they fell back to sleep and thought nothing of it. The next morning, as my dad walked out of his bedroom, he found something on the floor. He had forgotten all about the shaking the night before until that moment, thinking maybe it was just a dream. Their house was decorated in a western theme and had just built an addition to their house. The new addition was a bedroom and bathroom. They had an office and a bathroom to the side of the living room, and through the office was the entrance to their new bedroom. On the living room side of the office, there were shelves mounted to the wall, to the left if you face the doorway. On those shelves were usually ceramic horses, three on each shelf, with three shelves. When my dad walked into the living room from his bedroom, he noticed the horses were on the ground. They didn't appear like they had fallen, instead actually looked like someone had just taken them down and carefully placed them on the carpet. Given the height of the shelves from the ground, had they fallen, they would have likely broken into pieces. But there wasn't a scratch on them. Though this was kind of weird, he didn't really think much about it since the house had been shaking last night. He thought maybe there had been an earthquake, which is rare in central Illinois, but they have been known to happen. He bent down and moved the horses back to the shelves, and then entered the kitchen to fix his morning coffee. Once he had it in hand, he made his way to the front of the house, which meant he had to pass through the living room and another sitting room to the front door where he collected his morning paper. As he sipped on his coffee and skimmed over the paper, he looked to see if there was any mention of an earthquake in the middle of the night, but there was nothing. Of course not. The papers were sent out in the middle of the night, so he turned on the morning news and there was still no mention of an earthquake. That's weird, he thought. Maybe it was just the wind or maybe a big truck just drove by in the middle of the night. As the day went on, it was pretty normal. Nothing strange happened and it was just business as usual. The next night, however, the house shook again. This time it was more violent. The doors banged against their frames. The TV stand in the bedroom fell over. The bed shook back and forth, moving halfway across the room. The couple didn't know what to make of it. The next morning, nothing else in the house had moved, almost as if the shaking was limited to the bedroom. The horses were still on the shelves, and the rest of the house was left untouched. But the rest of the day went on, just like the day before, and that night was pretty calm. The couple got a good night of sleep that night, as the house didn't shake even once. 
However, the evening of the day that followed was a different story. They had a black lab they called Pepsi, who for some reason started barking at this one window in the living room. My dad tried to calm Pepsi down, which seemed to help for a bit, but then she started barking again, this time violently, like she was trying to protect the house from something. My dad got up and looked out the window, thought maybe she was just barking at a squirrel or something. So he went outside and walked around to the window to see if there was anything out there that could have captured the dog's attention, to which nothing was found. But the dog kept barking, so my dad grabbed his Polaroid camera, as this was back in the 80s before digital cameras and got down to the dog's level, at which point he lined up the camera with Pepsi's line of sight and snapped a picture. After a few moments, the photo developed. He saw in it the outline of a dark figure standing in the window with blood red eyes, at which time he showed it to his wife and the two agreed they needed to get rid of the Ouija board. My dad took it out to his garbage can which sat to the back of his yard out by the alley, in between his garage and a garden he had planted, then walked back into the house. The next morning when he went to the kitchen for his coffee, as soon as it was made, he took a drink and turned to find a board sitting atop his breakfast bar counter next to the back door. Honey, did you take the Ouija board out of the garbage? To which she responded with a no. Confused, he sat his coffee down and picked up the board and walked it back out to the dumpster. But this time before placing it in there, he broke it over his knee. The rest of the day went on as, as usual and nothing happened overnight. The next morning, my dad went to the kitchen to get his coffee, the same as usual. Only this time, as he started the coffee pot, he turned and saw sitting on the breakfast bar once again was the Ouija board. Someone's got to be messing with us, he thought. But when he turned the board over, there, plain as day, were his initials written in his handwriting, exactly where he had written them. He took the Ouija board back out to the garbage. But this time he laid it on the ground and went into his garage. When he came out, he was carrying an axe, which he used to chop the board into several pieces before picking them each up and placing them into the garbage can. That night, the house shook again, just like the first two nights, but this time, it was even more violent. It wasn't just concentrated on the bedroom this time, but the entire house shook. The TV sets in the bedroom and the front room both fell over, along with bookcases and pictures dropped off the walls. Their bed moved clear across the room, and the faucets in the kitchen and bathrooms turned on full power. The dog started barking ferociously, but she couldn't make up her mind where to bark at. She kept turning and barking all around her before jumping onto the bed and taking a protective stance at the foot of the bed over my dad and his wife, pointing herself directly at the door and barking while baring her teeth and laying her ears back while raising the fur on her back. The dog was seeing something that my dad and his wife couldn't. Everything lasted about 10 minutes, but it seemed like forever. It went silent and Pepsi calmed down, but no one could sleep after that. They laid awake in bed with their hearts pounding against their chests. When the sun came up, they made their way to the kitchen together. But as they reached its doorway, they took notice that the board was back on the counter by the door, in one piece. They didn't know what to think. They were frozen stiff by its appearance. My dad slowly made his way over to it and picked it up to find their initials in the same location, written in the same handwriting on the back of it. He then rushed out the back door with it and went to his garage and quickly came back out with the board in one hand and a can of gasoline with a box of matches in the other. He sat the board in his burn barrel next to the metal garbage can and doused it with gasoline. Once it was completely covered, he lit a match and dropped it on the board, but the flame went out as soon as it landed. So he lit another one and the same thing happened. Again and again, he lit match after match and dropped them onto the board. Each one went out as soon as it landed. So he grabbed the lighter out of his pocket and lit the pack of remaining matches on fire and reached down, holding it to the board until it finally caught fire. He stood there and watched it burn long enough for it to be reduced to ash and then made his way back inside. That night, the house was quiet and peaceful. A week went by and then a month followed by a year and nothing happened. It was summer again and the town was holding one of their annual sales. My dad and his wife once again walked down to it to see what all there was for sale. As they browsed the tables, they came upon a familiar sight. It was a Ouija board. It couldn't be, they thought. There was just no way. It was sitting in the same spot they had found one the last year. It wasn't possible. It couldn't be the same one. When my dad reached down and picked it up, he turned it over. There, on the back of the board, were their initials written in his handwriting in the exact same spot. They dropped the board on the table and went back home, never looking back. So there you have it, guys. I may have taken some creative liberties with this story, but the base portion of it, according to my dad, is completely true. He still has the Polaroid picture of the figure standing in his living room window with the dog barking at it. 
I hope you enjoyed this story, and if so, make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell for more videos just like this one. I've been Shannon, and this has been Psychology of the Unknown.